Well, Kyle, thanks for joining the podcast. It's great to catch up with you. This is going to be our first of multiple 2023 conversations together here. Uh, the first thing is, how would you characterize the start of 2023 for you and the BSF team? What has everybody been up to? Yeah, well, it's great to be here, Guy, first and foremost. And as usual, we're hitting the ground running. The golf industry show was really well attended, which to me indicates great engagement in our industry and some strong momentum going forward. As you know, too, the weather, the weather, which dictates a lot of what we do. Uh, I once heard this from one of my colleagues. He said, there's one thing consistent about the weather. It's consistently inconsistent. How true is that? Just when you think things are breaking, uh, Mother Nature will throw a curveball at you. Uh, and it's, it reminds me of the song guy from Guns N' Roses that they sing about just a little patient. Yeah, it fits so well for this. So you, you can't control the weather, but you uh, definitely can anticipate and respond. Speaking of weather, that brings us to the topic of this podcast. Uh, weather is certainly a huge part of doing a golf course renovation. It can dictate how that renovation goes. And we're going to be talking about disease control during the renovation process. And Kyle, with this influx of revenue entering the game the last two and a half years, thousands of courses reaching the end of infrastructure life cycles, and they're doing renovation work. A lot of it's big renovation work. Let's start with our warm season friends here. And what should they consider from a disease control perspective, a newly sprigged or sodded turf? Well, I think the last thing you want is to pour a bunch of money into a sprigging or a sodding job and lose the turf to disease. So I think what's important is make sure you are protected from diseases that can be present when you're doing the project. That's probably the most important thing. Yeah, and how susceptible is young Bermuda grass, zoysia grass, or paspalum to disease? Again, we're starting with the warm season here. You've got a lot of young succulent tissue that's being pushed, so it's prime for fungal infection. Oh, and by the way, all that water we're using to get it off to a fast start, perfect for our pesky disease pathogens. High humidity in our little micro environment is perfect for diseases to attack. Uh, when should that disease control process start on newly sprigged or sodded turf? Well, I'll tell you what, Guy, it needs to really start, start at the sod farm, tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's sprigs or sod, that turf grass is stressed as soon as you harvest it. And guess what? Turf disease pathogens strive on stressed turf. So I think it's very important to get it sort of before it becomes a problem, if you will. And so doing something at the sod farm, and we'll get to that a little bit later, uh, I think is a real advantage. You really have to pay attention to where you're getting your sod or sprigs from, Kyle. That's something that the superintendent has to consider well, well, well in advance here. Absolutely. Okay, and how about with uh, sprigging? How should courses that are going that route handle disease control? And what, what should be going through the, the superintendent's mind with disease control is that those sprigs are starting to grow? Yeah, I think one of the problems you have, if the turf is not protected when it leaves the sod farm, mm -hmm. is that the first week or two, the sprigged areas are very, very wet, and it's difficult to spray. So treating at the farm or with granular products might really be your only options because if you, you you can't do that, then you've got this new sprig turf, for example, sitting out there unprotected. Kyle, are there any particular diseases in warm season climates that would sprout up on young immature turf? Are there any diseases in particular that should be watched out for here when springing or sodding down south? Yeah, probably the biggest one is most diseases we can do a pretty good job on. The mm -hmm. one that jumps out at us would be Pythium. Mm -hmm. It likes wet, humid environments. And, hey, we're trying to get these sprigs off to a start in a wet, humid environment. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure if you've got temperatures that are, you know, pretty elevated, that it's very warm, that you need to be protected against Pythium. Because that can just decimate your turf very, very quickly, actually, within about 24 hours. And Kyle, what tools does BASF offer to help courses in warm weather states keep diseases thwarted or controlled on young and new turf? Yeah, so uh, as you know, our intrinsic line of turf fungicides 
fits perfectly for this per- purpose because uh, they're very broad spectrum. Not only can they provide control of about just any disease your young turf will encounter, but they're also going to ins- improve the speed at which that turf grows in and delivers a playable surface. I hear from superintendents all the time how much faster the growing was because the sprigs did not dry out or the sod came together faster and seams were gone a lot quicker. Uh, What should superintendents consider when using your intrinsic line uh, in warm weather renovations? Uh, What what methodology should they use there when uh, applying it? Yeah, so uh, I, I would say you know, stick to our standard spray programs, uh, but you might need, like I said, uh, a Pythium uh, application mixed in there. But we've got a, a, a great resource in our spray programs, and I would pretty much just follow along with what we've recommended. And it's a very balanced program with a lot of different types of products in there, and that would be the best way to go. Any final thoughts here with uh, warm season renovations and what should be on superintendents' minds when doing them and controlling disease on that young turf? Any fi- closing thoughts here for our friends down south? Yeah, I, I think you just need to anticipate that y- you might have disease pressure, so make sure you're protected. In other words, expect the best, but plan for the worst. Okay, let's move uh, up north here, and many of the cool weather renovations start late summer, early fall. Uh, what are some factors there when controlling disease on young turf that has been um, planted or sprigged or sod it that time of year, in particular, that late summer, early fall period? Yeah, once again, I think you just need to think about what diseases might be present at the time of the project. I mean, it could be dollar spot or brown patch or leaf spots, or I mentioned pythium if it's real warm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Soil or crown diseases are less less, uh, uh, of a concern. Just make sure that uh, you're choosing the right products for the right diseases. How important is that April and early May window before the course is getting ready to open, and what should be considered there with product applications for disease control? I mean, just because you have new turf doesn't (laughs) mean it's bulletproof. Mm -hmm. If there's one thing that I hear experts say is the main reason turf quality is not top-notch in late spring and summer, It's that we have waited too long to initiate our spray program, and we're always playing Mm catch-up. So we need to get past that and make sure that we're out there on that golf course early enough to give give ourselves some good protection. Uh, What changes, if anything, from a disease control perspective when shifting from the grow-in phase to regular play and daily maintenance? Yeah, as, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure you need to stay away from your scheduled spray program, but one watch out is definitely the need for a Pythium spray if conditions are favorable during growing. That's the one disease that can get you in trouble if you're not protected from it. North, north and south, Kyle? Abs- absolutely, yes. Yeah. And what else should uh, superintendents in uh, cool weather states be looking for uh, when their golf course is getting ready to open from a disease perspective? Which ones have you seen bite courses sometimes? As you know, uh, there are a lot of different diseases that are going to attack our turf. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think you just need to uh, historically look back at what your problems have been Mm -hmm. and make sure that you're protected against those diseases that you, you know, characteristically have had in past years and make sure you're just protected against those. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, how have the warmer falls up north affected the presence of disease during during the real early stages of the growing? Yeah, well, uh, the fall of the year is actually a great time, you know, to grow grass. Mm -hmm. Um, And so generally speaking, you've got your healthiest turf, you know, a lot of of, uh, sodding projects, seeding projects go on at that time. I don't think you really need to stray stray away from what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's still healthy. Uh, but just, you know, be on the lookout for things because, once again, back to the, the Pythium comment, you know, if, if temperatures get up and, and soil moisture is very, very high, humidity is high, that might be a problem that you need to, you, you might need to go out there and protect yourself against. And what tools does BASF offer for uh, 
cool weather, cool season superintendents, and um, fighting disease on new and young turf. Once again, the intrinsic uh, line of products fit very, very well because they're very broad spectrum. Um, we've got multiple fungicides to choose from there, uh, along with some other fungicides that are uh, solo products that can tackle you know particular problems like anthracnose or patch diseases or dollar spot or whatever it might be. So I feel like we've got just a really, really strong lineup of products to use for that purpose. Uh, where does the BASF Intrinsic Holiday Spray Program fit into a course exit renovations plans? You know, when I think about this holiday spray program, to me, summer equals stress. And young turf is very prone to that, given you've got a less mature root system. You've got rapid top growth, but you, because you're trying to encourage, you know, the turf filling in. So the holiday spray program is designed to take care of your disease problems and protect your turf against stress like heat or drought or mechanical injury or shade and just help with that growing process. Dick, yeah, Kyle, and kind of elaborate that on more a bit more. If somebody listening to this has not heard of the Holiday Spray program, how would you describe it and how much uh, goes into creating it? So it, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty straightforward. You know, we haven't tweaked it very much over the years, Guy. Mm -hmm. Simply make your monthly applications of an intrinsic product, like let's say Lexicon or Navicon, during the summer stress season. For most, it's going to begin around Memorial Day, and then it's going to end around Labor Day. But you can adjust as you see fit for your location. So in other words, before the stress, during the stress, and after the stress, so that you can stay protected and your turf maintain good health. Any closing thoughts here, Kyle, about uh, renovations and disease control uh, during renovations, or any closing thoughts about the tools that BASF offers? Yeah, I, I think really it's stick, stick to what got you there. Uh, I think superintendents know uh, the, the top performing fungicides for their particular golf course, stick to your spray program, and just be prepared if something sort of uh, jumps up and causes you a problem. But uh, I think at the end of the day is just stay with, with what got you, brought you to the party. Well, Kyle, it's great to catch up with you. I know we got another one of these uh, going pretty soon. Thanks for the time, and thanks for sharing so much of your uh, knowledge with our listeners here. Thanks a lot, guys.